The first thing that we need to understand before getting into PCB design is the overall hardware design flow. And where is PCB design part positioned in the complete system design process? Hardware design flow is nothing but a rough guide or steps that you need to follow to turn a concept into a real working system. Let us understand this with a simple example. Say you get an inspiration one day to control all appliances in your home with a remote control. This is just an idea or we can call it as a problem statement. Now the steps that you need to follow to convert this idea into functional system like this one is called the hardware design flow. There are a lot of different design flows available in literature but they all depict more or less the same process. This one is a very simplified version of the hardware design flow for clear basic understanding. It has 5 stages to convert a concept into a functional system. These stages are brainstorm, evaluate, design, schematic capture and PCB layout. Let us discuss one stage at a time. Now you have a problem statement in hand like you want to control the appliances at your home with a remote control. This is an input to the brainstorm stage. The objective here is to generate as many concepts as possible to achieve what we want to do. Like we can control the appliances with an IR remote or design an RF based remote or even can use Wi-Fi and control them using Android phones. This activity is ideally done with a group of specialists to have different perspective on each concept. These concepts are evaluated in the next stage using the requirement and the constraints matrix. Requirements and constraints address the important details that the system must satisfy. Like the system should have range of 50 meters, it should be able to control across the walls, can be manufactured within $25 price tag, should have an independent remote control etc. The objective here is to select the best candidate from the concepts generated in the brainstorming stage. Now if you consider the constraints, IR cannot go across the walls. We cannot use Android phones as we need an independent remote. So this boils down to selecting RF remote for controlling the appliances. There may be situations where things will boil down to nothing. In that case, you would either go back to the brainstorming stage or readjust the requirements. Now, this selected concept is translated into a block diagram in the next stage. And the block diagram is further translated to components under the boundaries of requirements and constraints. You can use a top down method where you start at a high level and recursively decompose or bottom up where you start with a building block and do increasing integrate. For complex systems you might have to use the combination of the two. This stage will produce the system architecture of the concept. In some cases you might hit a wall and need to go back to previous stages to reconsider the things. This system architecture, which is currently in the form of blocks, is translated into logic circuit in the next stage. The standards and reference design act as a guide in this process of creating the logic circuit. This stage will produce different design documents such as schematic, bomb, and netlist. Again, you might hit a dead end during this process and might want to go back to previous stages to reconsider some things. Now these design documents are used by the next stage and transformed into files that are required for PCB manufacturing. In this process, the netlist is imported in the PCB tool and the PCB design is done under the boundaries of standards and constraints. The output of this stage is PCB layout file and all the other files required for manufacturing of PCB.
once the pcb is made it is populated with all the components to have the functional system again you can always go back to previous stages if a reconsideration is required to meet the standards and constraints